Hey friends, I am so happy that you are here with me today. I have a new guest and I have to say it, we have a man in the house. <laughs> Yes, let's go. <laughs> Brian is representing the other half, but we are going to talk today about so many great things. It's going to be a conversation full of incredible value, incredible wisdom. I absolutely adore Brian. And if you're not following him on Instagram, I encourage you Brian Dixon, because he is just an amazing human living by his values and a good example for us to follow to live with our values as we build our entrepreneurial journeys. So we're going to talk today a little bit about how you can build your business around your people. And as we dive in, I know you're going to recognize some of what we're talking about because it's something that I say, but it's going to come from another person. So it's going to have a little more weight to it. And then also we are going to dive into how you can do the impossible and what you need to do that. There are three key things. And we're going to get a little bit of insight from Brian as to why he works with women. So the likes of us. All right. Without further ado, Brian Dixon, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Oh my goodness, Robin. I love your show. I'm so excited to be here. And I think some people are going to get free today. Like I really feel that there's some blocks, there's some maybe baggage, maybe some barriers to helping you as the listener move forward. And so I'm really excited about our conversation because I really truly believe some chains are going to break today. We're going to have some fun. Oh, I love it. This makes me so happy and so excited. You guys should see my smile. It's like huge. Okay. So Brian, before we dive into all this juicy goodness, will you tell the listeners a little bit about you and a little bit about how you got to this point in your journey? Okay. So just going all the way back, I knew at an early age that I was an entrepreneur. And my first time I figured out that I was an entrepreneur, I, I grew up in a Christian home. My dad was a Bible college professor. Bible college professors did not make a lot of money. So we were a garage sale family. So we'd go to garage sales for clothes, garage sales for toys, et cetera. And so one day we were having a garage sale and I really wanted a Nintendo. I'm going to date myself a little bit, but I wanted a Nintendo. And my mom said, if you want a Nintendo, you have to earn the money. And so I figured out that if I took two of my toys, my GI Joe action figures, I, I uh, removed the back so I could take them apart, put them back together in a new way. I could sell them as a new innovative toy. And so I would might've been in third, fourth grade, and I was doubling my profit on used toys at garage sales. So that's how I knew I was an entrepreneur. I love creating. I love looking at problems and owning the problem, right? And an entrepreneur is somebody who sees a problem that isn't theirs, takes 100% responsibility for that problem, goes and solves it and sells the solution at a profit. So I've always been an entrepreneur. I would consider myself an edupreneur, an education entrepreneur, because I truly believe that education is the best service that we can provide to our clients. And that meant I was a classroom teacher for a long time. I was a classroom teacher for seven years, school administrator for seven years. And all of that led me to working with people with a message. And I love helping female Christian entrepreneurs who have a message to share and an audience to serve, but they get stuck when it comes to two things. They get stuck with the money and they get stuck with the marketing. And I love talking about money and I love talking about marketing because marketing is simply just sharing a message that you care about to people you care about. And money is fuel for your mission. I met with a nonprofit leader this morning for coffee and he was, when we were talking about his budget and, and his numbers and things like that. And I'm like, if you increase your profit by 10%, think about how much more you guys can do. And so I think for some reason, Christians are afraid of talking about money and afraid of talking about marketing. But if, if we figure out both of those, the mission can reach even more. You are preaching to the choir. <laughs> Yes, I love, love this. I love this conversation so much. And listeners, I'm going to encourage you when we start talking about money after this episode, go back and listen to my conversation with Judy Weber, because we dove deep into this and how the Bible does not tell us that money is the root of all evil. It is the love of money. Yep. And, you know, multiple times in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, the in, I think John and Paul, they all talk about that. If we ask for what we need, what we desire, God is already in us. He's already with us. He's on this journey with us. And he wants us to have what we need to be able to move forward and serve other people. Mm -hmm. It's the priority and your motive behind that money. That is so incredibly important. So mm -hmm. we'll be talking about that a little bit later, but Brian, Let's talk first. When you mentioned just now about 
getting your message out there to the people you care about. Mm -hmm. And your book is start with your people. So I want to emphasize this because I've always said to my clients that you already have people in your email circle, right? In your community. If you're a parent, you have coaches, you have team members, parents, you have teachers, you have your children's friends, parents. We have so many emails, your family, your friends. We have so many emails already to start with Mm -hmm. now, because there are rules and regulations. You can't just add them to a list and say, Hey, I'm adding you to my list. You have to be on my list, but you can contact them and let them know, Hey, I'm starting this business or, Hey, I have this idea. And I would love for you to be on my journey with me. If you want to join me, stay with me, enjoy my content, learn from me, support me. But if you don't want to be here, no sweat off my back. It's cool. You can go your merry way, unsubscribe here. But I've always talked about that community that you already have and to tap into them so that then you can spread your wings by them spreading the word about you and spreading your message. So I want you to tell your perspective and how you have used this concept to build your Mm -hmm. business. Yes. Porter Gale said many years ago that your network is your net worth. And one of the things I love about working with women is broad stroke comment here, right? Broad brush comment, but mostly you're very social. You're more social than us guys. And and you probably know even more people than the average guy does. I, for example, my kid's school, all the women are all connected and the guys don't even know each other. It, it takes a move of God for the dads to get together, but the ladies find a way to have coffee with each other and talk with each other and everything. And so you already have this network of people And so the question is, how are you showing up and serving them right now? And you're probably already doing that. You're probably already volunteering at your kid's school. You're probably already doing stuff with the PTA. You're probably already text messaging people and asking how they're doing and how can I pray for you and that sort of thing. And so there isn't much of a gap between you doing that in your real life, quote unquote, and your entrepreneurial life. In fact, wherever you go, you bring yourself, you are who you are, wherever you go. And I think authenticity is one of the key um, strategies for really growing your business is just being fully you. Mm -hmm. So what I would do, and I talk about this a little bit and start with your people is show up and serve. If you don't have income right now, if you haven't gotten your coaching or your book or your course off the ground, what would it look like for you to reach out to your kid's principal and say, Hey, would it be okay if I have a mom's group? And the principal is going to say, fine. Or what if you reached out to your church, somebody, a leader at your church and said, hey, is it okay if I just do this thing? If I just start Monday nights, we're going to have marriage Mondays. And so for the next six weeks, my husband and I, we're going to do a little bit of marriage mentoring. And is it okay if we use the one of the Sunday school buildings? What can you do right now in your life, in your actual life, not your email list life, not your TikTok life or your Instagram life, in your actual life, to start doing some things. And as you start doing some things, right? As you start showing up, being faithful, doing it as if unto the Lord, right? So in your local area right now, what happens is um, you begin to figure out what you love doing and what is hard. And I really do think that Jesus came to completely break the curse of the fall. And one of the curses of the fall, there's two, right? Pain and childbirth and work is hard. I believe that as Christians, that when we trust in Jesus, he breaks the curse of the fall. And and one of those is the fact that work is so hard. I think it's a secular mindset. It's a fallen mindset to believe work's gotta be hard. Work doesn't have to be hard because if we put people first in our business and we look at, like Jesus looked at the crowd as sheep without a shepherd. Imagine you looking at the other moms in your kid's class as sheep without a shepherd when it comes to their fitness, if you're a fitness coach. As if you look at the moms in your kids' class as sheep without a shepherd when it comes to their budgeting, or when it comes to how do they talk to their teenager, or when it comes to how do they love their husband, or whatever your niche is, you do have to figure out what's your thing. We can talk more about that. But if you see, these are people who are hurting. These are people who are making big mistakes, but you have been gifted with vision. And you can look at them and go, oh my goodness, they don't even know. They don't even know that there's organic makeup out there or whatever it is. They don't even know (laughs) that you can get fit in 30 minutes a day. They don't even know that the school lunch they're giving their kids is literally causing their ADHD. They don't even know that. 
And for you to look at them as sheep without a shepherd and go, man, they need a shepherd in this area. You're not the great shepherd, but you're like a little shepherd in your area. And if you show up and serve them, you'll begin to make an impact in their life. And then your business grows because of referrals. Other people say, wow, she was so great. She helped me get clear skin. She helped me get fit. She helped me organize my homeschool classroom, whatever the thing is. And that's really where your business grows by serving the people that are already in your life. 100%. And I love this so much because I have a current client who is really, she has got such a gift because her husband and her daughter have been, have celiac disease. So Mm. she has mastered gluten-free cooking. I am gluten-free and the, the options for gluten-free eating that are palatable, taste good, and don't have a ton of extra starches and all this stuff in them, you're limited. And it's hard to find really good things, but she has made this her life's mission. And she's starting a business to become a gluten-free coach. So listeners, you can follow her, Naomi, the Naomi Petrick, I think it is on Instagram, but her website is naomipetrick.com, yeah. but a lovely woman. But this is one of those things where she has this. And I'm like, I keep saying to her while she's waiting for her website to be done, you don't have to wait. These people are out there. Look at your Facebook page. Who's following you? Who needs your service? Start talking about these things. Engage with them. Show them that you are the expert in this area. Meet with the people that are asking you questions at church. Give them an opportunity to hire you. But it's so funny how women, even though we are, like you said, good at networking, we Mm -hmm. are social. We have this drive within us naturally, ornately that to serve other people. That's that motherly instinct, but yet we hold ourselves back. Oh yeah. Why are we so afraid to reach out to our network, Brian? It's, I truly believe it's fear of man. It's misplaced fear. God asks us, he commands us to fear the Lord. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, which means if you want to live rightly, if you want to do things the right way, which is wisdom, you have to know where your fear is placed. And fear isn't like cower in the corner and not take any action. It's an honor. It's a respect. And and even in the Bible, it says, uh, God is no respecter of persons. In other words, God's not afraid of people. God knows exactly who he is. And when we understand our identity in Christ for your listeners as daughters of the king, literally think about that. You're a daughter of the king. And yet you're playing, you're you, like, you have no identity in the palace, but the authority and the identity that you have as a daughter of the king leads to clarity and that clarity of your purpose and of knowing your place. And it's not like when it talks about how Jesus came and he didn't regard, what is it? A quality of, with God as a thing to be grasped. The, the concept there, I think it's in Philippians, the concept there is he didn't come to be like, I'm the king, honor me. It was like he came to serve people because he knew who he was. And in the same way, when we know who we are, we are going to face rejection. Look, Jesus was killed, right? We are going to face rejection when we're trying to help people get clearer skin. And they're like, oh, here she comes again because she's telling me about the thing, right? Like I've lived that. We've all lived that. I work with a lot of people in the direct sales industry. And if we're very clear on the value of what we provide for that our product or service provides, and we know who we are, which is our identity is not in man's approval, And we just focus on the people. We just focus on our client. One thing I love to say, I can't remember where I first heard it, but the concept of yes lives in the land of no. And you're in a land of no. And oh, you're going to hear no all day long, but we don't look for the no's. We look for the yeses. And the yeses live in the land of no. So if you think about your network right now, you are the, the moms that go to your kid's school and you've got this amazing gift. Maybe it's a product, maybe it's a service, maybe it's your coaching, maybe it's a book you want to write one day. And they don't even know about it. Like they don't even know that's what you do. That's not a kindness and a service to them. And so I think it requires us putting aside our fear of man and saying, God, I want to make the most of every opportunity, which is what I'm called to in the Bible, make the most of every opportunity. So the way that I can make the most of every opportunity today is ask good questions. Tell me what's going on in your life. Tell me what you're working through right now. And then I love that question, by the way, what are you working through right now? When you go to the grocery store, instead of how are you, you say, what are you working through? And I've had some amazing conversations in Target because I say, what are you working through? Oh yeah, I'm good. I'm like, wait, no, you didn't ask me that. What am I working through? Actually, I'm worried about my daughter right now. Oh, tell me more about that. That's all you're doing. What are you working through? Tell me more about that. And every once in a while, God will be like, here you go. 
here's somebody who really needs clear skin and they're actually asking you how you do it. And mm -hmm. now you have an opportunity to present. You're not going around shouting on street corners, but you're making connections with people. You look at Jesus with the woman in the well, great marketing strategy. He met her where she was. He connected to her heart. He asked her good questions. And then he presented the opportunity to move forward. So I, I think there's so much wisdom in the Bible in terms of how do we approach people, but it really comes down to where do we find our approval? And it's not in man's eyes. I love that so much. And Brian, when we are starting a business, or maybe we have been in business for several years, but we're not growing, we're not able or haven't been able to make those connections that we truly need to make to move our business forward. Yeah. It feels like it's impossible. It feels like mm -hmm. it's an uphill battle. And in your TED Talk, I just loved the concept you had of the three things that you need to do the impossible. Yep. And I think if we focus on that for a second, it may help bring things full circle for the listeners who are truly struggling to take that action, to mm -hmm. talk about themselves in their network and to showcase what their expertise is and how they're there to serve other people. Yes. Okay. So let's take a real specific example, right? Let's say that you want to start doing some tutoring or piano lessons, something like that. Like you want to actually start your, your business to get your business off the ground and whatever your thing, insert your thing. The person listening right now, insert your thing that you want to do. The first step is you need a mission to pursue. So the exercise I have my clients, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have my, my clients go through this is I actually take out my glasses and I say, I, I have these magic glasses. I'm going to pass them through the screen. You get to wear my magic glasses and they will show you the future. Okay. It'll show you in one year from now, what does your life look like in one year from now? Being clear about the vision. What do you want to be true? Delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. So friend, what are the desires of your heart? What do you want to be true in one year from now? And immediately my clients always, I'd love to have, I'd love to have 10 piano students. That would be, 10 piano students would be amazing or whatever the thing is. Okay, cool. Mission to pursue, check. Mentor to guide you. Mentor to guide you. Success leaves clues. Are there other piano teachers that have grown a business? Go learn from them. Go follow them on Instagram. Go watch their TikToks. Go buy their course about how to grow your piano teaching business. There are mentors out there who share the behind the scenes already. It's incredible to live. This is the best time in the history of the world to be alive. Okay. Christians, we got to understand that we are given this opportunity to live in these days. You are purposely picked to live right now. This is the greatest time for you to be alive. You have the skills and the gifting to make an impact for the Lord in these days. These hard days are perfectly set for you to make an impact. And so I love that you can go take a class online. You can follow somebody on social that will show you the steps. And so we pick the person we want to learn from and we learn their ways, right? We learn how is it that they grew their business? How is it that they grew their piano teaching business? And then are we doing the same thing? So for example, for people that follow my stuff, one of my rules is the rule of 10. Every single day, reach out to 10 new people. That's it. And that might mean you comment on their social media. Every single day, if you just commented on 10 new people's social media, some of that will return back to you. People will follow you. They'll start engaging with you. And you'll develop true friendships just by engaging with people. Mm -hmm. Ten uh, Rule of 10, every day, 10 people. Okay, so that's the second part, the, the mentor to guide you. And then the final one, which is I know what you talk about in your brand new book, which I'm so excited about, is mindset to see you through. We have to have a growth mindset, not a fixed mindset. And the reality is the world is always changing. And I say it with a smile, the world is always changing. This is a good thing. And, and yet we build our castles on what worked yesterday. But I think what we have to do is look at every opportunity that happens today and say, how can we pivot? How can we adjust to see what the new opportunities are and pursue those opportunities when they're in front of us? And I think that's really the mindset. It's got to be a, a, a mindset of there's opportunity in front of us. As I, when I had you on my show, I love asking that question. Where do you see opportunity? Because opportunity is all around us. And so much of us, we tell, so many of us, we tell the story of limitation. 
like, oh, I can't do this. Right now, there's a move in, in the Christian world about all of our trauma. And so oh, because of my trauma, I can't move forward. Because of my upbringing, I can't do this. Because of my blah, 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 I can't do this. But God is bigger than all of that. I'm not saying that stuff's not real. Of course, maybe get some of that stuff addressed. But look at the opportunity. I often say that your mess is your message. Like uh -huh. your pain is actually a way to move forward and build a connection with somebody. Uh -huh. So that mindset, you hear the shift? That mindset is what it takes to help you keep taking action. The action's what leads to results. So again, uh -huh. mission to pursue, a mentor to guide you, and a mindset to see you through. And that's how you grow that business. That's how you get started. Yep, 100%. So I, I have two comments. One, yep. I love from a mindset perspective, everything you just said. And I think it's important to remember that you, things don't happen to you. They happen for you. And I love to use the example of when my father died, when my dad died and went through eight months of cancer treatment and suffering, like mm -hmm. unreal. Wow. I was so devastated to lose my dad at 36, wow. but that gave me so many opportunities to help other people navigate that yeah. journey with cancer, with death, with losing a parent and anything that you happen to go through is going to be a blessing down the road, no 100%. matter what that is. And you can actually use that in your messaging, like you just said, to build connections, build relationships, to show how you understand. And this goes all the way back to what you were saying earlier. If you have a message, if you have a skill, if you have a talent, if you have a gift that has been given to you by God, you are doing a disservice to all those people out there who need you. If you aren't building those connections, building those relationships, and then telling your story so that you can connect with them and bring them in to serve them. So the other thing I wanted to say, when you talk about a mentor to guide you, mm -hmm. obviously as a business coach, I am full on hire a business coach, hire a therapist, hire whoever you need to get you from that place that you are sitting in right now that will move you forward to take intentional action, create a strategy and to become who you're meant to become. What do you say to people who are so I don't even know if afraid is the right word mm. or resistance, one or the other, afraid or resistant to mm -hmm. invest in themselves, to invest money in themselves to grow their business so that they can serve others. Yeah, I would center on the word philosophy. There is a philosophy out there. Basically, philosophy is like a theory of life. Mm -hmm. And we all have a philosophy. We all have a theology, which is our theory of God. And we have a philosophy, which is our theory of life. How do we see the world? How do we see the world? And I would question your inputs. I would just ask you a question and just say, who is influencing you? Who is influencing your philosophy of your life? And just look at it. And if you really want to challenge, some of you listening right now really want to challenge, my challenge to you is I want you to take a week, okay, this week, starting right this second from one week from today. And every time you listen to a podcast, every time you watch a YouTube video, every time you uh, watch a TV show or a movie, I would just want you to write down, what was it? And if you wanna get really advanced, what was the philosophy they were teaching you? Because everything has an agenda. Every news program, every reporter, every movie, every TV show has a philosophy. They want to, and I'm just going to go there. I, I believe that most of the secular media wants to normalize perversion. They want to make it normal. They want to make the biblical mindset, what hypocritical, antiquated, judgmental, all those things. And they want to take this secular worldview and say that this is the standard now. And so I think one of the reasons that we're so hesitant to invest is because we are, we are used to not paying for things. We, we're used to getting it for free. But the, here's the thing. If you don't pay for something, if you don't pay for a product, then you are the product. If you don't actually pay for something, then they're selling your attention. They're selling your attention either to an advertiser or they're selling or they're somehow making money. A quick example is whenever you read your emails, like broadcast the emails that you've subscribed to, you're the one that is the client. You're the one that's the customer. You're consuming somebody else's content. So the person that makes money is the person that sends the emails. The person that makes money is the one that creates the podcast. The person that makes money is the one that teaches from the stage. It's the listener that is the one that's paying for it. And so the thing is, you're already paying in some way. 
There's two ways that we pay through time and we pay through our treasure. And so think about what you did last night. What did you watch? What did you listen to? What did you read? You paid probably with your treasure. You paid your Netflix subscription or you paid for that Audible book. And you also paid with your time. And we are to take our time and to steward it well. And so what I love about working with a coach, just to answer your, your actual question, Robin, what I love about working with a coach is I can invest. I've, I always have a coach. I have a coach I'm working with right now, Sarah. Me too. And when I pay Sarah for an hour of her time, I'm getting about 100 hours of value. Like she's uh -huh. about 100 to 1 value right now because she can look at me and specifically say, Brian, here's what I see. Here's some suggestions. Here's some ways to move forward. Let's follow up with the thing I told you before. And I'm getting so much more value than 100 hours of an online course. Mm -hmm. One hour with my coach is worth 100 hours of an online course, right? 100%. I can't even express how much I agree with that. Because yeah. here's the thing. When we try to do anything alone, we're spinning our wheels because- yeah. This person on this podcast, let's just use you and I, we both have podcasts. Yeah. You're saying one thing on your podcast. I'm saying one thing on my podcast and we're yeah. pretty aligned. So I right. doubt our messages are too different, but if you listen to five other podcasts to try to get the answer to one question, everybody has a different answer. So now you're even more confused, more overwhelmed, hesitant to make a decision because you don't know which one is the right one for you. And yes. so now you're backpedaling in your business. You still don't have the answer to your question that aligns with you, your business, your values. But when you work with someone mm -hmm. and they can put their fingers into that web of your business and help you untangle it, yep. it makes such a world of difference because we don't know what we don't know. And That's to right. have somebody's eyes and heart to see what, what is happening with either our mindset or our level of fear and anxiety and all those things, those emotions that hold us back because of those thoughts, yeah. it, it's just incredible. Yeah, it's amazing. Here's a good analogy. And I was just talking with a friend about this morning. So I want you to picture your dream house. We, we had the opportunity to build our house a, a few years ago. And so we got to pick a bunch of stuff, right? And so I want you to imagine you're building your dream house. You're going to work with a landscaper who aligns with your vision. You're going to work with the person that does the tile or the architect or the, the person who designed your kitchen, like all of these. It, and we're talking like dream house. We're not talking about like unlimited budget. You get to build your dream house. And, and what you end up doing is you end up not just working with one person, but you have these experts in each of these areas so mm -hmm. that you can have this amazing house that you could really reuse and, and be hospitable and have people over in the same way. Your mind is a garden, right? Your, ha your life is like this house. And we allow experts in, in the different areas of life. I love calling it the faithful five, faith, family, finance, fitness, and friendship. So we've got these kind of five areas of life. Other people have said the wheel of life, but there's these different areas of our life. My number one suggestion, because we live in the age of the guru, where there are people constantly teaching us, every platform is an education platform. TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, they're all education platforms. Our email list, our websites, they're all about education. They're teaching us a philosophy. So here's the challenge, friend. Pick your guru. Pick your teacher. Select your teacher wisely. So look at your faith. Who is the person you're going to listen to? Because there's a lot of what they call it, tickling ears. There's a lot of fake theologians out there who mm -hmm. are teaching stuff under the guise of Christ, but not, it's an alternate gospel. So that's faith. So find somebody that you're like, this person, I agree with them. I'm going to learn from them. And then what do you do? You go all in. For, for Julie and I, we love John and Lisa uh, Bevere. We, we listen to all their stuff. We read all their books. We take all their courses. We've gotten to meet them. There are people when it comes to growing our faith, because because they put the 10,000 hours in and we want to get that return on investment. What about fitness? I've got this guy right now that I'm learning from. So when I go on YouTube, I'm not watching other people's fitness videos. I'm watching just this guy. And you expound that across all of your areas of your life. And what happens is you make even more progress because of the power of focus. Because you're not what they say, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Double-minded means listening to two people at the same time. Double-minded. Don't be double-minded, be single-minded, which means listen to one person. Now, ideally, this person's aligned with scripture, so you can say, yes, I trust what they're teaching. And, and now you have these experts, and you say, when it comes to my diet and nutrition, I'm not um, 
trying to make a new decision every day, I'm sticking to the commitment following the plan. And we know that you're going to make more progress when you follow the plan. And the coolest thing about living today is that there's a lot of plans out there. So go pick a plan, follow the plan, and you're going to see results bigger and greater than you've ever seen before. 100%. I cannot agree more and could not have said it better. So on that note, Brian, I think we have just released so much value in the past, whatever, 30 minutes. And I want to specifically thank you for being here and sharing your faith, sharing your journey, sharing your expertise and your wisdom. I just really have the most respect for you and everything that you put out into the world. So if the listeners want to connect with you, which I highly encourage, how do they do that? Where can they find more about you, learn from you, work with you, take one of your courses? Thank you for the question. I'm really excited to to be here. And I just, if there's anything that you hear from me today, I, I want you to know that you can make an income sharing your message, that each of us are stewarded with a message. We have a message. It's probably your message. And so we've got this message And if you need help figuring out how to share that message and how to make money from that message, that's the one thing that I do. So I've I've got free training on my website, BrianDixon.com. Head on over there, check out my free training. It's going to help you move forward. There's I have a four stage path. It's really simple. This business growth journey, and it helps you do it profitably. So you're not wasting your time. You're not wasting your money, but you're making progress. And I'd love to serve you in that way. Love it. Okay. I'm going to put you on the spot, Brian. On your show, at the end of your show, you yep. ask your guests if they are mm-hmm. willing to pray for the listeners. Yeah. Would it's you be willing part. to? I didn't even prepare you for this. I have I never, it. ever done this on the show before. Yeah. But because you're you. Yeah. Are you willing? Of course. It's just right. talking to your dad. Let's talk to dad. All right. Let's go. Right. Lord, we love you. And we just thank you for this time. Lord, thank you for Robin. I pray specifically as the time of this recording, the book's about to come out in five days. So I pray for peace and for clarity for her when it comes to all the book launch strategies, wise as serpents and gentle as doves. And so Lord, give her the wisdom to take the right action, but also the gentleness to, to show up for people, to, to not yell at her family and freak out at the publisher and all the crazy things that happens as an author, the anxiety of being an author. But I pray for clarity and peace, a peace that passes all understanding. So I pray that over her today. And Lord, I pray for the listener right now, the person who has made it through these 40 minutes of our conversation and is now sitting in her drive or on a walk with her dog right now, Lord, or just waiting for her kids and just told her kids, be quiet. I got to listen to the rest of the show. Lord, I pray specifically for that woman right now that you would give her a vision of who she is in you, how you see her as a redeemed, clean, renewed daughter, a a daughter like, like the bride of Christ, right? That analogy of just this amazing Uh, steward of so many good things. Lord, encourage her today. Encourage her today as she seeks to make a difference for you. Lord, I I also pray for any of the, just the anxiety, the fear, the the comparison that it's just shake off. Just feels, I don't know, she's she's walking through leaves. There's maybe an orchard and there's these leaves that fall on her and she just brushes them off. That's what the anxiety going away feels like. It's just, I don't, get off me because she knows who she is and she is your daughter. Help her to show up, filled up today, filled up with you, your Holy Spirit, your word that she stands on, your light that she shines in Jesus's mighty name, amen. Amen. Brian, that was beautiful. I hope listeners that you just feel so refreshed, so renewed after listening to this episode. If you stayed till the end, especially thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That means that you were truly inspired. And I really appreciate that. If you feel so inclined, please leave a rating and review because that is how more people will find this show. And especially this episode to learn more from Brian. So thank you everyone for being here and I will see you next week. Thanks, Robin. Thank you, Brian.